Welcome back to another segment of our Pet Project Vet Project, where we have local vets answer your questions that you have sent in. Today is no different. Please welcome back friend to the show, Dr. Levi Embry. Dr. Levi, thanks for joining us once yeah, again. Yeah, absolutely. Good to be here. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I know that we talk uh, normally, it is all about pets, but normally we're pretty heavy on a dog questions here on the show thus far. So today we are going to focus on our cats. Now, I've heard you're a bit of a cat person. I'm very much a cat person. Very yeah. much a cat person. You got any uh, at home? Uh, actually, no. My wife no. is allergic to cats, and oh. so we don't have them as inside pets. Okay. Uh, but I do like seeing cats. <laughs> so a cat person that married someone that absolutely cannot have yeah, cats around. Yeah, that's right. Uh, it's an that's enigma. her story. That's her story. I don't know if it's true <laughs> yeah. or not, but she's sticking to it. There we go. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, you know, our cats can also uh, fall victim to diseases, to illnesses, things of that nature. Today we are speaking about one in particular. It's a virus that's fairly common in cats. We're talking about FLV. That stands for feline leukemia virus. So first of all, can you just kind of give a uh, explanation of what FLV is? Yeah, it is a, the, the big detail, and I say F-E-L-V, so if I say, Ooh. but it's the same thing, same thing, so yeah. But the big detail on FLV or F-E-L-V is that it's a retrovirus. So because of that, it can encode itself into the, into the host cell's DNA. That's what makes, that's really what makes it such a big deal. Um, that, that sounds detail. complicated and very serious. So encoding yeah. itself into the DNA, what, what can you, like in layman's terms, if somebody that, yeah. like me, didn't do well in science growing up, uh, how is that more <laughs> impactful than something that doesn't? Uh, yeah, so basically that makes it to where once the cat, once that happens, the cat can never get over it, really. Oh. Uh, it, may, it may get over clinical symptoms, um, but the cell itself is turning out the virus so oh, wow. yeah so that's um that's a big one okay. so that's that's a key detail so it would uh basically just the cat forever has it and it might have flare-ups every now and then but it doesn't have uh consistent symptoms but you just have it now yes Ooh. well f yes that's a carrier so there's okay. several different states so okay. that is one of the states there are other states in the what we call them progressive okay. cases of FELV where it can get worse, you know, and they can develop cancers. You know, if another detail is, an, is what's called an oncogene, which is where it lands basically in front of a tumor producing gene and it causes the uh, production of a tumor. And so this is how FELV virus can turn into a cancer. Man, so there's a whole lot of comor comorbidities with it is what I'm uh, understanding. So uh, obviously it's something that we want to be made aware of. How um, do cats catch this virus and what are some signs to look out for? Yeah, they catch it from other cats. Um, through saliva is a primary mode of transmission. Um, symptoms can range through a lot. So in the beginning stages, some cases may simply be like an upper respiratory infection. Once the cat becomes persistently infected uh, in one of those progressive states that we talked about, they can develop anemia, they can develop neuropathies, they can develop blindness, um, they can have skin disorder. I mean, it li literally can affect almost every body uh, organ system. So, yeah. Okay, so obviously uh, something that we want to be made aware of, is there a way to protect our cats from FLV or FLEV, what have you? Yeah, there is. There's a vaccine for it. It's not 100% effective, so it is possible for a vaccinated cat to still catch the virus. Um, but I think depending on the vaccine you use, it's anywhere from about 80 to 95% effective. So it's a, uh, it is one of those, whenever we consider a core vaccine, um, it's one of those that, that we vaccinate for. Cats in high risk situations, which would be outdoor cats, cats in, uh, in like shelter situations or cats in multi-cat households, um, they should definitely be vaccinated for it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so you said that it is, you know, somewhere between 80 and 95 percent effective, this vaccine. If a cat, say, gets the vaccine and then also contracts FLV, is it due to the vaccine? Do they get a lower case of it or do they experience it the same as a cat that would be unvaccinated? Most cases 
would probably be a lower, like a, the, the symptoms would be mitigated. Okay. Uh, I think a lot of those cases probably uh, go undiagnosed. Oh, wow. um, so the cases that we see where it would be an FELV vaccinated cat that got it, most of the times when we, when we diagnose FELV in a, in a sick animal, it's a pretty severe case. Okay. So you're going to have to go to, a, a little later on in the game, having a significant flare-up with that cat to recognize, oh, we, we know what this is now. Otherwise, um, it, it flies under the radar. So uh, obviously, like I said, it's going to take a little bit of time for those symptoms to flare up for you to be able to. But how often do you really run into this? It's relatively common. I forget the exact statistic, but I want to say about 3% of cats uh, get it. So... Um, you know, not every cat, obviously, but 3%, is, you know, you, you see it for sure. So if you always, if the cat always has it, um, how do you as a vet treat it? Do you just treat the symptoms and know that this cat's going to have it for the rest of their life? Or is there some kind of a therapeutic answer? Yeah, that's a good question. They're doing a lot of research on that right now. Uh, there are immunomodulators there that, that can be used. Uh, there's mixed results on those, so do they help, do they not? Uh, that's still debated. Uh, the same thing with some antivirals. There's some antivirals that, that have been tried on FELV. Um, again, in some cases, you know, there are mixed results from the studies on those. Part of the problem with antivirals is a lot of antivirals are not very well tolerated by cats, so that's another thing to uh, consider. Usually, with these cases, we end up treating any comorbidities they have, infections, things like that. And then we try to keep them indoors, you know, those, those, and if it's an FELV positive cat, we try to make them an indoor cat. That's going to reduce their exposure to other pathogens because they're immunocompromised, right? And then it's also going to keep them from spreading it to other animals, so... So it seems like there is like therapeutic plans for cats that then uh, live, you know, the rest of their days with FLV. But that doesn't necessarily mean just because you, your pet, your cat, you know, your fur child uh, has FLV that they have to um, be suffering because of it, right? Yeah, yeah it depends. Um, in some cases, if you know, if you see a significant illness and, and the cat's also FELV positive, that kind of can give you a little bit of an idea of prognosis, and usually the prognosis drops whenever you find an FELV positive on top of something else that's pretty severe. Um, but it's not necess necessarily a death sentence, you know. So in some cases you can get them over that and then go on to live, you know, in some cases a, a full life. So. Yeah. All righty. Well, good to know. Good to uh, be armed, especially if it's as uh, common as 3% or something around that of uh, cats that uh, contract FLV and then, of course, living with it for the rest of their days. But there are therapeutic plans. So uh, is your recommendation just get them to a vet and uh, you guys can come up with, with a plan together? Yeah, that would be a good thing to do. Also, if you're taking in a stray or some something you found on the side of the road, showed up in your doorstep, something like that, have it tested because that's going to help you kind of know how to, what to do with that animal and whether you want to expose it to your other cats, things like that. So it's a good thing to test for any time you have a, a, an animal that you're uncertain of their medical history, especially. Absolutely. And is this something that can be um, transferred to humans? No. Okay. It's species-specific. Uh, cats, cats get it. Black panthers can get it. Some of the other exotic cats can get it. But uh, but no, humans don't get it. Dogs don't get it. All right. So something to know if you're you know picking up a stray cat, if you have other cats in the home, and then of course just for uh, the betterment of that cat, if it's experiencing some kind of symptoms, you're gonna want to know what else it has in order to uh, go about the plan of treatment to try and uh, help them out, right? Yep. Correct. Live their best days as fellow cats. That's right. Yeah, All that's right. right. Well, once again, Dr. Embry, it's always fun to catch up with you back here at the desk. We'll see you next time. Sounds good. Awesome. Guys, if you want to have your questions answered here on our vet project, pet project, here's what you do. You just uh, go ahead and email pet project at KLTV or KTRE.com. That'll send to us here in the newsroom that puts on this uh, segment here every week, Thursdays at 1230. And you could see your questions uh, next week.